If, so this is a second set of examples from the partial fractions lesson. Oops, in the algebraic fractions pack. So I'm on page eight of the booklet as it stands. All right, so we've got one repeated root. So we mentioned it before, how it fits into it. There. So this fits into there. So if I multiply through by that as a common denominator, I get 5x minus 7 is a plus b lots of x minus 1 because I times th this bit by x minus 1 squared and it cancels. I times this bit by x minus 1 um, squared and it cancels and leaves me an x minus 1 on the top. So if I use x is 1, that leads to 5 lots of 1 minus 7 is a. So minus 2 is a. Now I've got no other number to use now because I've used up all my numbers. So a good one to use is 0. But I'm also going to put this a is minus 2 back into it. So my 5x minus 7 is minus 2 plus b lots of x minus 1. So if I use x is 0, I could use any number I wanted really. I could use a million. If I put 0 in, I've got minus 7 is minus 2 minus b. If I take the b over and take the 7 over, I've got b is minus 2 plus 7. I've got b is 5 there. In the last example, I didn't get a chance to write it down because I'd run out of time. But now I've got plenty of time. So it's minus 2 over x minus 1 squared plus 5 over x minus 1. Once again, I'm in a position now where I can... Uh, do binomial expansions on it. Uh, right, let's have a look then. So, example four. So, example four has got one linear and one repeated. So, same idea, multiply through by the bottom line by this. So, 3x squared minus 1. The a's only got that part. So it's missing 2x minus 1 squared. The b has only got that part. So it's missing x minus 1 times by 2x minus 1. And this is a bit where people get mistaken. They don't put that 2x minus 1 in. And then for c, I'm only missing x minus 1. So looking at the brackets, to get rid of the first bracket, the 2x minus 1, I'd need x is a half. To get rid of the x minus 1, I'd need x is 1. So I'm going to choose that. But if you look, a similar idea to the last example, I've got three unknowns, but I've only got two numbers I can use that, are, that would readily make the brackets equal to zero. Right, so if I put three in there, I've got three times one squared minus one, which is two. The B and the C, they both disappear. I've got two take one is one, one squared is A. So A is just two. Right then, let's try x is a half. So x is a half will get rid of a and get rid of b because it'll make those brackets there into zero. So I've put x as a half in, I've got three times a quarter minus one, so I've got minus a quarter. A's gone, b's gone, so I'm just left with c. I've got a half minus one, I've got minus a half is c. If I do the rearrange, I get C to be a half is C there. So I push it up a little bit. Right, so my equation now, if I put these two numbers back into it, my equation now looks like 3x squared minus 1 is 2 lots of 2x minus 1 squared plus B lots of x minus 1, 2x minus 1 plus c, so plus a half lots of x minus 1, there. So I've used up the two numbers that were easy to use. If I try x is 0, like I said before, you can choose any number you want. You can use a million if you wanted, if you're mad enough to. Right, so x is 0 it gives me minus 1. x is 0 in here would give me 2, in that first bracket x is 0 in here would give me b, x is 0 in the last bracket would give me minus a half. So 
So I've got minus 1 is 1 and a half plus b. Take that away, I've got minus 2 and a half, so minus 5 over 2 is b. Writing it out, the 3x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, 2x minus 1 all squared. So a is 2, so that's nice and easy. x minus 1. Now b is a fraction. It's minus 5 over 2. So the 2 goes on the bottom line. So 2 lots of 2x minus 1. The c is also a fraction. It's a half. So it's plus 1 lot of the 2 goes on the bottom line. And it's 2x minus 1 all squared. And I think that's all the examples done now. So if you have a go at exercise free, there's loads of questions there to do, isn't there? All right, okay, cheers. Bye-bye.